All right, you clicked on the thumbnail, so don't get mad at me. Don't get mad at me for saying spiritual deconstruction. I know. It's a very polarizing phrase. Either people like it and they're going through it or have been through it, and so they, they want to talk about it, or they really, really hate that phrase. And I think that there's a lot of reasons why Christians don't like that phrase, spiritual deconstruction. One is because of what it's usually attached to, right? Um, just even last week, Paul Maxwell, a very prominent evangelical figure, big time writer for reformed publications. He came out and said that after a period of spiritual deconstruction, he no longer believes in Christianity and he walked away from the faith. And there have been so many like him, uh, big time Christians, very popular Christians who go on and they have an Instagram post or they have a YouTube video or something. And they, they say, well, I don't believe in Jesus anymore because I've gone through this period of spiritual deconstruction. So a lot of Christians look at that phrase and they just hear it and they attach it immediately to the idea of apostasy. And so they don't like that phrase. They don't want people to use that phrase. And they definitely don't want to go through that process themselves because they believe in Christianity. <laughs> they want to believe in Christianity. They want it to be true. And so they don't want to walk away from the faith. Another reason why people don't like this phrase is because of where it comes from. Uh, and there's a lot of good reasons for this. Uh, there was a French philosopher back uh, 50s, 60s, uh, Derrida, who came up with this idea of deconstruction. And basically what he was trying to do is to break down the line, the division between two binaries, or uh, I think an appropriate word that we could use is absolutes, uh, that you can kind of think of it as, you know, this, this one thing and the complete opposite or the binary of that other thing. An example would be male and female. And what Derrida would uh, do is to say, well, that line between those two different things, uh, it's not as solid as you think. And it can go back and forth and it's more fluid. And he used that really to destroy <laughs> a lot of systems, a lot of, uh, a lot of Western cultural ideas to be able to really just say, well, there's no absolutes. Um, so you can't say something 100% and be 100% true. It's, it's another idea from postmodernism. Uh, but a lot of people, they hear that word deconstruction and they go like, you can't use that word because of where that comes from. Uh, and that idea doesn't really jive with scripture, right? That says that it is 100% true, that it is inspired from God, that it is inerrant. And so they go, well, you can't use that word because it doesn't jive with Christianity. Um, well, the problem with that is that a lot of people, when they're going through this idea of spiritual deconstruction, when they're in the process of it, they have no idea who Derrida is. <laughs> Most people. Now, some people definitely, they get into philosophy and they look him up and they start using some of those principles to break down uh, the system, the idea of Christianity, the truths of Christianity. And so that might be true. But a lot of people, they're just thinking about what they're going through. They're just thinking about how uh, they've been hurt by the church or uh, they've seen hypocrisy, like really deep hypocrisy up close. Or maybe there's some claims in the, in the Word of God that they just don't hold to be true anymore. And so they, they start to really wrestle with those things. And, and so I think, this is me, this is my channel, I think it's okay to use the term spiritual deconstruction for, for a couple reasons. One is that words change, right? Um what is it like maybe 70, 80 years ago, you would have used the word most likely uh, you would have used the word to talk about yourself as a Christian, as a fundamentalist. Uh, would you now? Maybe not. Right. We think of fundamentalists now and we, we think of something else than 70, 80 years ago when the articles uh, were written by Ari Tori and all of that. Uh, so we, 
we understand that words change. Uh, you could look at all kinds of, of words, common phrases that, I mean, even 50 years ago, it was like a cuss word. <laughs> and now we say it all the time and no one's offended. Uh, so words change. And, and I don't think that people, when they're going through spiritual deconstruction, I don't think that a lot of them are thinking about it in the philosophical term uh, that it was originally used for with Derrida. Uh, also, when people are hurting, which let's be honest, if someone's going through spiritual deconstruction, they're probably in a lot of pain. It's not a fun experience to be questioning everything that you've believed for so long, uh, to have the the rug, you know, just uh, taken from underneath you. And now you're left wondering, like, how am I supposed to understand this world? That's not fun. That's not a pleasant experience. Usually there's a lot of pain. There's a lot of hurt that goes into that. And because of that, maybe they're using a phrase that you don't like. Maybe you're one of those people that don't like spiritual deconstruction and think, well, just use the phrase questioning your uh, Christianity or uh, questioning your faith or having doubts. Use something like that. Don't use that phrase. Well, you wouldn't say that. You know, someone, someone who, let's say that someone was in a, a, a bicycle accident and they're, they're talking about their arm and they're saying, you know, my wrist is broken and you're like looking at the arm and you're like, it's, it's very clear. This is broken. That's actually not your wrist. You know, your wrist is up here. Do you think that would be helpful uh, to someone who was going through that right then, that that guy who's laying there and has his uh, wrist broken or arm broken and they're saying it's the other thing. Like, that's not helpful. Uh, usually when someone's going through something like that, you just go, oh, OK, uh, let me let me help you. You're not trying to correct them. And someone who's going through some crisis of their faith and they're using the phrase spiritual deconstruction I don't think it's an appropriate time to come in and say, you know that phrase that you're using? I don't think you should be using that phrase. Use this one instead. Uh, that's not going to be helpful for them in the moment, and it's definitely not going to help you to be able to have some influence in this or be a safe place for them to be able to ask these questions, to wrestle with these things. They're going to be like, this person isn't safe for me to be around right now. There's a lot of judgment coming from this person. So... Don't come to that person and say, oh, I don't like that phrase you're using. And also understand that people use phrases differently when they're hurt. That guy who's lying there from the bicycle accident, uh, he might use some words that he wouldn't use in a normal situation, right? Or a tone that he wouldn't use in a normal situation because he's hurt. And hurt people use maybe not the best words. <laughs> Uh, uh, they don't have the best words. Uh, they have words of pain, words of hurt, and maybe even attitudes of hurt. And I think as Christians, we need to be able to look past those words, look past those attitudes, and just assume the best in them and be able to be like, all right, well, what's your question? What are the things that you're wrestling with that you're deconstructing? And let's talk about these things. And coming in and saying, well, you shouldn't use that word isn't going to be helpful. It's not going to give you any influence in that situation. And it's not going to be something that's going to be helpful to that individual to come out of it to what, as a Christian, anyone who goes through a period of spiritual deconstruction, I want them to stay a Christian. I want them to believe the gospel and we don't want to be able, we don't want to be a barrier uh, for that person to still believe in the gospel. If we're coming in and being jerks uh, when they're going through this period of hurt and pain and what they really need is some support and some understanding and maybe just a little bit of grace to be able to look past some of those flaws, some of those edges and be able to look to their heart in that those those sincere questions and let's see if we can try to help them with that uh, that's what i think about spiritual deconstruction i do 
have a podcast that I just started last week uh, called Brainwashed for Jesus. You can go on to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Overcast, whatever podcast platform you use, and listen to the first two episodes. A new episode just dropped today. Uh, And let me know. Maybe I should say this. If you're going through a period of spiritual deconstruction yourself, um, listen to the podcast. Maybe leave a comment here. Uh, This is a safe place. This channel, I hope, is a safe place for you to be able to ask those questions or if you want to listen to the podcast and find other ways to be able to ask those questions anonymously or whatever. Uh, And I would love to be able to get into contact with you, maybe walk alongside of you as you're going through this period of spiritual deconstruction because it can be scary. Uh, It can be real scary when you walk it alone, but you don't have to. So I'll be back next week with Marking Up the Word on Wednesday. I'll see you then.